guys, how's it going? Welcome to Real Classic Film Reviews. Um, I was going to film some reviews today, but I've been suffering with a bit of a cold lately, full of cold, so wasn't really feeling getting in front of the camera. Uh, and I thought I would do a bit of a, a long overdue physical media update. And as the title would suggest, I'm going to do my Criterion collection. Or as much of it as I can get through before my voice starts to uh, choke out. So I thought we'd at least start attempt to start with um, the first shelf here. Right at the front here we have um, a few DVDs. I only have a couple of DVDs, Criterion DVDs. Um, ones that I picked up quite cheap along the way. And one of those such titles is uh, Life of Brian uh, from 1979. Directed by Terry Jones. I'm a big uh, Monty Python fan, so it's great to have a bit of uh, Monty Python in the collection there. So Life of Brian's the first one. Next up, um, and that's Spine 61 for those guys, uh, for those of you who are interested. Next up, I've got Spine 100, uh, which is the Beastie Boys anthology. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the Beastie Boys music. Um, more so, I've kind of picked this up because it was super cheap and also it's Spine 100s, which I find quite interesting. Uh, followed up with, you know, one of the most controversial titles in the collection. This is The Rock. I think this is quite controversial along with um, Armageddon and what else is in it? Robocop. Uh, and again, I picked this up really, really cheap. Although, you know, this is a great action film. This is one of my favourite action films, to be quite honest, uh, from 96, I believe. Um I'm not sure, but yeah, brilliant kind of Sean Connery, Ed Harris, Nicolas Cage, of course. Um, you know, taking it over the top and back down again in The Rock. Uh, next up, I've got uh, Tatis, uh, Jacques Tatis, uh, Mr. Hulot's Holiday, the first appearance of um, Monsieur Hulot uh, in the series um, from uh, Tati. So really, really funny French comedy there. All right, and then we go into the Blu-rays. So uh, the first one is Samuel Fuller's The Naked Kiss uh, from 1964, uh, a former prostitute kind of relocating to uh, downtown um, suburbia and the craziness that goes with it. And it is crazy. It's really bizarrely shot. Um, maybe not for everyone, but uh, definitely worth picking this disc up just for the special features alone. Some of the interviews on here with Fuller and, and his kind of his cohort are, are absolutely excellent. So definitely worth a pick up. And in the same vein, we have uh, Sam Fuller's Shock Corridor. Shock certainly being the operative word for this. I mean, this thing still contains scenes now that are, are very close to the bone. Um, I mean, now, never mind at the time. You know, it's it's kind of got a commentary on a lot of kind of the 60s kind of hot topics, racism and things like that. Really bizarre film, but excellent. Really well done. Who's the star? Who, who's... Oh God. Peter Breck. Excellent in that. Really good. All right, next we've got Clouseau's Diabolique um, from Henry Clouseau uh, from 1955. This film, um, although it's probably tamed by kind of modern horror uh, standards, has such a creepy vibe to it. When I watched this again recently... Uh, this it very much has a vibe, although it's nothing like The Shining. It very much reminds me of that feeling that I get when I'm watching The Shining. Um, you know, that feeling of kind of dread, impending doom, if you like. But absolute masterwork of that. All right. OK, so next up, we've got um, Suzuki's Senjin Suzuki's Tokyo Drifter. It's a this is a crime thriller, a gangster thriller, but it's to <laughs> it's totally not. I'm not a massive um, you know s student of of Japanese films. I'll I'll kind of admit that now. But uh, for for a film made in the sixties, sixty six, um, you know, well it says there uh, it's a jazzy gangster film, and I think that's probably a really good way to kind of describe this. Um, it really was not what I expected when I put it in, but definitely recommend it if you haven't picked that up for, for your collection. So. Next up, we've got Lord of the Flies, um, you know, a film by Peter Brook. <sighs> you know, I've read the book. I've I've kind of seen the film. I've probably watched some other TV adaptations of this as well. I love the cover art on this release. I'm not the biggest fan of the film. I don't know if I'll get some some hate for that. Um, yeah, I keep revisiting it again. Brilliant uh, special features on here. But yeah. I'm not sure I can get away with that. Right, so the reason I did this video is because I thought that I'd, I'd watched everything in my collection. I'd watched all of the Criterion um, editions that I actually owned, and I was incorrect because the next one, which is um, A Taste of Cherry, I haven't actually seen. <laughs> so I was kind of like just quickly flicking through, and I thought, 
I'm pretty sure I've seen all these and I haven't seen this, so I do apologise. But this is um, Abbas Kiristami's A Taste of Cherry in Iranian film. Um, Frankie, a guy who is uh, looking for someone to bury him after he's, you know, going to commit suicide. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's great. I do apologise. Um, I did think I'd seen that. Right, next up we've got Black Orpheus, which is a modern um, retelling of the, the Orpheus myth. Uh, and then this one is... It's directed by Marcel Camus, but I'm not sure who did. Oh, crikey. I'm not sure who did the cinematography for this, but that is the absolute standout. I mean, it's got, it's kind of set in modern day, um, well, for the late 50s, anyway, 59, in uh, the kind of carnival in, in Rio de Janeiro. And it looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I'll get shot for not knowing who did, who did the director of photography on this. Um, but yeah, it's worth it for that a lot. An excellent film. Uh, next up, Stanley Donan's uh, Charade with um, Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn. Um, well, yeah, Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn in a, a comedy thriller. You can't really go wrong. Definitely worth checking out. I think I mentioned this when I picked this up, that it always gets uh, labelled with the kind of greatest film that Hitchcock never made because of obviously it's Cary Grant and it's a, a bit of a romp, but... That's definitely a disservice to Stanley Dornan, who was a, an outstanding director in his own right, but definitely worth picking that up. So that's Charade from 1963. OK, next up, we've got Carnival of Souls um, by Herc Harvey. I think Herc Harvey, did he actually star in this as well? I might have totally made that up. I don't know. Yeah, but the very definition of a cult film. I remember watching this on late night TV a long, long, long time ago. Um but definitely, you know, one of those films that's, it's, you know, very much a B-movie, um, you know, excellent, like, kind of, um, it, you know, it looks it looks cheap, it looks like a B-movie, and that's kind of to its credit in a way. Um, and I haven't seen any of these special features on here, so I really need to kind of check those out. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, a young woman take a woman, a young woman, sorry, in a small Kansas town survives a drag race accident and agrees to take a job as a church organist. Um, en route, she's haunted by a bizarre apparition that compels her towards an abandoned lakeside pavilion. Already sounds awesome. Yep. So next up, we've got Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ uh, from 1988. This kind of came at the end of a funny period. Well, for me, certainly anyway, in terms of Scorsese, I know uh, the decade of the 80s, he was kind of fresh off Raging Bull, obviously, which was released in 1980. And then he had a like an odd little run. I don't know whether he, it's kind of... What did he do? He did After Hours. He did, um, oh, crikey, I can't remember. Uh, after Hours. King of Comedy, After Hours. Duh, 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 duh. This, obviously, The Colour of Money. And then he kind of explodes back into life again in 1990 when he made, uh, when he released Goodfellas. But yeah, Last Temptation of Christ, obviously, it's gonna, it's a, a divisive subject matter. Um, I'm not the most overly religious person in the world, so I can take it for what it is, but you know, Defoe's Christ, and, and it's just, it's so well done. And uh, David Bowie as well, as, um, does he play Pontius Pilate? It's, oh, it's, it's great stuff. Uh, next up, we've got The Blob, if, it, if it's coming out. Obviously, a very early Steve McQueen appearance there, The Blob, 1958. I mean, this is a B-movie. I mean, when you watch this now, <laughs> it's just, oh, God. The ending, it, I don't know, it's... You know, I think it says somewhere on that blurb, schlock sci-fi, and that's exactly what it is, you know, from that kind of 50s monster era. Um, yeah, it's great stuff. Let's have a little look. Yeah, a cult classic of gooey greatness. Oh, it's just fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's great. It's great. Check it out. Right, next up, we've got Spy 97, which is backwards for some reason. Oh, Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing uh, from 1989. Probably... I mean, it's Spike Lee's masterpiece, isn't it? Has, he had a, has Spike Lee made a better film than this? I'm trying to think now. Am I going to get caught out? No, he hasn't, I don't think. Uh, I mean, this and this edition is just ridiculous. Outstanding. Piles of special features. Brilliantly packaged. You know, if you haven't got that, that's this is one of the kind of cornerstones of any Criterion collection for me, is do the right thing. Right, OK, next up we've got uh, Antonioni's um, La Ventura, uh, which is a really spooky film. Um... I, I, I'll be honest, I watched this a long time ago. I wasn't too keen on it. It went in like a direction that I wasn't expecting. Um, I didn't really understand it. I was quite young at the time. And it's a long film. It's a long film. 100, 143 minutes, yeah. Uh, from 1960. But yeah, 
Now, I won't spoil it, but, uh, you know, a young girl go, uh, disappears on a boating trip. And what happens next? Well, you wouldn't expect what happens next. But, yeah, La Ventura, a uh, great film. Right, okay, next up is The Lady Eve. Brilliant Preston Sturgis film. I mean, Preston Sturgis, I don't think he actually made many films. I mean, he's great, don't get me wrong. He's a fantastic director and, you know, good enough that he can release The Lady Eve and um, do, 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 Sullivan's Travels in the same year or certainly very close to each other. Um, and the Palm Beach story right after that. But Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck. This is Barbara, Barbara Stanwyck's show. Absolutely. She's fantastic in this. Uh, she's a lunatic and... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's 94 minutes. It's brilliant. Check it out. Um, next up, we have The Cranes Are Flying by uh, Mikhail Kalatazov. Oh, crikey, I've just absolutely butchered that name. Um, but yeah, brilliant, <coughs> excuse me, brilliant Russian film. Um, a couple who are blissfully in love until World War II tears them apart. Uh, not the easiest of watches, crikey, uh, by any stretch. You need to be in the right frame of mind for it. But a uh, brilliant bit of late 50s uh, Russian cinema there. Again, I watched some of the special features on this not too long ago. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there's some great stuff. The Cranes Are Flying, check it out. Get it on your list. And next up, we have The Royal Tenenbaums, which is still... Oh, is it my favourite? It's still my favourite um, Wes Anderson film. Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna stick by it. Excellent. All these Wes Anderson films have such great artwork right the way through them, but... I remember like watching this back in the cinema and just just absolutely laughing all the way through. I love Rushmore as well, but uh, The Royal Tenenbaum is probably my favourite Wes Anderson film. Uh, really looking forward to The French Dispatch, which as of filming this video is yet to arrive in the UK. So next up we've got um, Andre Tarkovsky's Solaris. This was the first Tarkovsky film that I saw and I watched it uh, just after, heck, it'll have been just after the 2002 George Clooney uh, Natasha Mikkel Horn um, version. Obviously, I read about this and then kind of went to revisit this. And <laughs> they obviously they share a similar theme, but they probably couldn't be more different. This is Tarkovsky's very, very um, good answer to 2001: A Space Odyssey in a lot of ways. Again, this is this is a long film, 166 minutes, but I mean, it's 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 a monolith of sci-fi. This it's not an easy watch if you're you know it's it's certainly not Star Wars or Star Trek. Um, but it's so good. Oh, God. I need to watch this. I need to listen to this audio commentary. There's an audio commentary on this that I want to watch. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's 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 going to take some time. But yeah, uh, Sword of Doom, right? Okay, so we've got uh, Kihachi, o <coughs> Kihachi, <laughs> easy for me to say, Kihachi Okamoto's uh, The Sword of Doom. Uh, brilliant kind of samurai film starring, Tish uh, <coughs> excuse me, starring Toshiro Mifune. Um, as well as, oh, what's his name? I'm going to butcher his name completely. Is it Tatsuya um, Nikedi? Nikedi. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, it's on the back there, right in front of me. Uh, Tatsuya, Tatsuya, Tatsuya Nakedai. Tatsuya Nakedai and Tashiro Mifune. Heck, I do apologise. I'm going to blame my cold for all this. Um, but yeah, uh, I, mean, I think, did the uh, Nakedai, I think, actually went on to make or star in ran and uh kagemusha as well um incidentally so next up we've got metropolitan uh from 1990 i slept on this for a long time i actually bought this really cheap i hadn't watched it for a long i hadn't watched it at all i wasn't massively familiar with whit stillman's work uh, and then i watched it and it was absolutely it's so funny it's like a, a kind of really dark comedy but it very much reminded me i don't know if anybody who's seen this will agree but it very much reminded me of american psycho for some reason i think that uh kind of upper class, um, you know, uh, upper west side, Manhattanites. Uh, it's got that vibe to it, but it's essentially just, you know, a bunch of, of, of spoiled bastards sat around uh, gossiping about each other, which probably doesn't sound enticing, but it's amazing. Uh, next up, Sancho, the bailiff uh, from Mizuguchi, Kenji Mizuguchi. Again, not the easiest watch. Crikey, uh, depressed the hell out of me when I first watched this. Um, but it's so well done. Oh, God. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. You know, amazing black and white cinematography. Um, just what this family go through in this film. Oh, heartbreaking stuff, but really well done. 
Uh, Ivan's Childhood, again, another film by Tarkovsky, oh, sorry, uh, uh, you know, an earlier one. You know, oh, crikey, if you, if you know Tarkovsky, then you know what to expect from, from something like this. Um, oh, the debut feature, oh, as if I didn't know that, the debut feature from him. Uh, you know, one boy's war ravaged youth, moving back and forth between the traumatic realities of World War Two and serene moments of family life. It, you know, it's got that kind of time um, distorted, jumping around vibe to it. But again, looks amazing, and you know, it's Tarkovsky, so it's it's a masterpiece. Uh, Overlord. Been a long time since I've seen this. Is still wrapped up. Been a long time since I've seen this, but um, still, you know, jaw dropping uh, World War Two footage. Uh, from obviously D-Day from 1944, from 1944 June 6th um, and this kind of interweaves that footage with a, you know a kind of narrative um, definitely want to check out a great companion piece to films like Saving Private Ryan if you're interested in that and the storming of the beaches and you know that's just the film for you uh, next up we've got um, Sawdust and Tinsel uh, from Ingmar Bergman not my favourite Bergman film, which I think is probably still Cries and Whispers, probably is my favourite. Uh, but definitely a good film. Um, you know, the kind of drama, the romantic drama that takes place uh, within a travelling circus uh, between the circus owner or the, um, I think it is the owner, and a, a horseback rider. So, you know, the kind of trials and tribulations and romantic entanglements if you would if you will um but yeah 1953 spine 412 definitely have, i don't think i've seen any of the special features on this either so i was just having a little double check but yeah sawdust and tinsel let's have a look next up we've got uh mishima a life in four chapters from paul schrader obviously with this famous crazy semi psychedelic gold artwork um i'm a fan of schrader's early work i like i'm a big fan of this this is kind of one of his um it's you know it's his epic really um and i didn't know a great deal about mishima before watching this which is good you know it's a good biopic in that respect um but schrader's early works you know hardcore blue collar this i'm a big fan of that you know then he kind of went off the rails slightly for me. He's got a new film coming out, actually. The Card Counter. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, I digress. This, I mean, this, it's totally nuts, but it looks fantastic. You know, the, I don't think that the uh, the cover art of anything has summed a film up so much in, in all of cinema. But yeah, um, if you're up for it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a worth a watch. So that's Schrader's um, Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters. Uh, next up, uh, the Darjeeling Limited, some more Wes Anderson. Uh, it kind of gets a bit bit of a raw deal, I think, in the in the pantheon of Wes Anderson. This, but it's oh, this is another film. I mean, if you're if you're a Wes Anderson fan, you know what you're getting. You know what it's going to look like and the and the, the vibe of the whole thing. And this won't disappoint. So check that out. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Raffleson's Five Easy Pieces. This features a really underrated performance by Jack Nicholson. I don't think it gets spoken about as you know enough, really. Um, quite heartbreaking as well towards the end. Um, Karen Black as well, who I'm usually not a massive fan of. I like in this. She does a great job. Was she no nominated for an Oscar? Possibly. Da, 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 da. Possibly. I don't know. But yeah, Five Easy Pieces. Really good film. Uh, the Life and Times. Or The Times and, of Harvey Milk. Sorry. The Life and Times. Um, brilliant documentary about Harvey Milk, who Sean Penn famously played, I think. Was it Sean Penn? Um, I think so anyway. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Won the Oscar for, uh, you know, best documentary. Um, and one of the first kind of feature works, really, feature films or feature documentaries to kind of discuss, um, like, gay life in the States. So this was 1984. So very, yeah, really interesting. So Topsy Turvy, which is a Mike Lee film, a quite odd Mike Lee film in terms of Mike Lee's... Um, filmography i always associate it with the kind of bit more down-to-earth gritty kind of kitchen sink dramas and you know the kind of cast of characters that populate those mike lee films you know i think up there broadbent spall uh leslie manville uh, are all here but obviously in a film you know essentially about um 
the stage and the theatre. So very different from um, what you might associate it, what what you might associate Mike Lee with, uh, but you know, no less for it. But yeah, you know the world of Gilbert and Sullivan coming to life. Um, but yeah, outstanding stuff. 1999, crikey, time flies. Right, next up we've got probably one of my favourite film noirs of all time, and that is uh, Kiss Me Deadly by Robert Aldrich. Uh, absolutely fantastic film, uh, 1955, Spine 5, 6, 8. Um, you know, Mike Hammer um, from Mickey Spillane's novel. Kind of real sci-fi horror vibe to this as well. Um and if you've seen it, you know what I mean. The the sound effect of the the box. I won't say any more than that, but absolutely excellent stuff. Dialogue's amazing. Really gritty and really um, tough in places as well, for certainly for the time, for the mid-50s. All right, so and speaking of uh, the 50s, one of the best films of the 50s, uh, Henry Fonda, 12 Angry Men, uh, directed by, you know, the Sidney Lumet. Um, and I kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the great courtroom dramas, although it doesn't really feature a courtroom. It's more, you know, 12 jurors, um, and one of them, obviously, um, the titular Henry Fonda, um, kind of going up against them. And it's just such a great film. I mean, yeah, you don't need me to tell you about that. The Outlaw Samurai, uh, by, uh, Hideo Gosha. Um, now I think this was his, was this his debut film? The first feature film, yeah, by uh, Hideo Gosha. <laughs> I mean, when you're making things like this as your first film, you know, um, and this was actually, I didn't realise this, but I can't remember who told me before. Um, this was, this is actually, um, serves as a prequel to a, a kind of famous TV show. So I'm assuming a Japanese TV show, uh, The Three Outlaw Samurai is a thing, I don't know. Um, but this is... Essentially, the prequel, oh, an origin, an origin offshoot of a Japanese television phenomenon of the same name. But yeah, ugh. if you're a samurai film, a samurai film fan or a samurai fan, look at this artwork. Yeah, that's got to be in your collection. Next up is Anatomy of a Murder. Speaking of courtroom films, this is my personal favourite courtroom film of all time. 1959's um, Anatomy of a Murder from uh, Otto Preminger. I've just recently, I've not long ago, reviewed this film for my channel, so I'll leave the link in the description below. But, you know, a never better James Stewart, Lee Remick, Ben Gazzara. Um, just absolute masterclass in, in kind of dramatic storytelling. Um, a lot of people aren't a massive fan of the ending, which obviously I won't spoil here, but it's... it's. I don't think I was when I first watched it. George C. Scott as well in this, um, I need to mention, but... Oh, God. It, it, if you like a courtroom drama, that's about as good as it gets. Um, right, speaking of masterpieces, we've got Marlon Brando in On the Waterfront, uh, directed by Elia Kazan. Uh, Brando's... Brando's Finest Hour? I don't know. It's it's up there, isn't it? It's definitely up there. Uh, I mean, some of the stuff that he does in this. I mean, I love Brando. I love him in The Godfather. I love him in a lot of his earlier works, but this is... Just something else. Even Marie Saint as well. Um, Lee J. Cobb and um, Rod Steiger. Um, and who plays the prick? Carl Malden. Oh, epic stuff. And next up we've got Badlands um, from uh, Terence Malick. Before he became Terence Malick. <laughs> that we all know and love today. You know, one of the only... Did he, he made two films in the 70s. It was this and uh, Days of Heaven. So this is 70, 73. Days of Heaven was 78. And then he didn't direct anything else for 20 years until he directed The Thin Red Line. And then he became the Terence Malick that, you know, you either love or hate now. Uh, you know, a kind of traditional storytelling methods, as you'll find in this film, went out the window big time. But, you know, absolutely amazing, you know. You've got uh, a young Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek and on the run from the law. It's just the music in it, the cinematography in it. It's amazing. Badlands. 
go check it out and finally on this shelf we have um harold lloyd's safety last from 1923 um i don't know a massive amount about harold lloyd i've got this and i've got speedy and i don't really i don't know if i've seen anything else i'm obviously a big fan of that kind of style of filmmaking i'm a big chaplin fan i'm a big buster keaton fan and i feel like lloyd probably gets a little bit lost along the way i mean when was this if this was 23 i mean chaplin was um oh god correct me if i'm wrong but the gold rush i think was 1925 the kid he'd done in 21 chaplin at this time was literally about to go on just a stratospheric run of, of masterpieces and so was keaton i mean keaton was making the you know the, the general go west um things like that but i think lloyd gets a little bit lost and i need to kind of check out more of his work because you know based on this and speedy that i've, I've seen it, it, it's outstanding you know i mean this is the famous kind of clock tower stunt and when you see how that was made it's <laughs> totally ridiculous but yeah that's uh safety last from 1923 spy number 662 right okay i'll leave the video there we'll have this as part one we'll do the next shelf down in part two um so you don't have to listen to me rambling on too much but i do appreciate you watching this video guys um appreciate all your support appreciate all the most recent subscribers if you haven't subscribed to the channel it would be mega if you could do so i fully appreciate all that support love it and i'll see you all soon take care